Welcome to the Chambers Connect with Careers Week. I'm Kate Manley, president of the Rensselaer County Regional Chamber of Commerce and host for your virtual exploration of careers this week. Today, we're joined by Ed Anker, who's the Troy Office Director and Senior Project Manager at Finney Design Group. Welcome, Ed. Hi, Kate. Good morning. How are you? Great. It's great to have you with us here today. So tell us a little bit about Finney Design Group. Sure. So Finney Design Group is a uh, multidisciplinary architecture uh, and construction management and interior design firm. Um, my, uh, my partner, Mike, started the organization uh, in about 2007 uh, after a long career uh, working in the commercial space. Um, and so we've been around for quite a while now. Um, I'm recently with the firm. I've, I've been in the industry for a little over 20 years now, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm with Mike now for the last two. Um, it's been an excellent place to, uh, to kind of have the second half of my career. Um, we do some really, really exciting work uh, in the, on commercial projects, uh, but we also do quite a bit of high-end residential work as well. Um, so I'm happy to be with Finney Design Group and, uh, and really happy to be here to discuss it with you. That's great. So what got you interested in being an architect or what was your personal pathway like? Yeah, so um, I've actually wanted to be an architect for a very, very long time, um, and I can actually trace that back to um, my fifth grade teacher, Mr. Ellsworth, uh, in, in class one day. Um, I was doodling and not doing what I was supposed to be doing. I was drawing little floor plans of, of uh, things I was dreaming up in my head. Um, and he never, he didn't actually scold me, but he came up right behind me, and I remember him tapping me on the shoulder and saying, Mr. Anchor, it looks like you might have a career in architecture someday. Let's get back to the work. And ever since that conversation, um, I've, I've kind of always wondered what architecture was about. Uh, and I started my, uh, my pathway from that point on. Um, I kind of tailored my, uh, my high school career um, towards becoming an architect. And a lot of that was um, contrary to, to popular belief. Um, there's a couple of misconceptions about architecture and architects in general is that number one, you need a lot of math. That's not necessarily true. And number two, you're gonna make a lot of money because that's not necessarily true either. However, um, we'll never starve, right? We've made it, I've made a very, very comfortable living uh, and, I, and I do a lot of really interesting projects with a lot of really great people. Um, and uh, while not wealthy uh, in money, I'm wealthy in my career and my, and my pathway. So after I, uh, I graduated from high school and focused most of my efforts on um, working towards an art uh, focused degree, um, you know, I, I worked with my guidance counselors uh, during that period of time uh, and the art, believe it or not, but the art classes, uh, much more so than some of the technical classes uh, relative to, um, you know, math and science, uh, while all important, um, the art classes were the things that really uh, helped me not only get into college, um, but also be successful when I was going through my architecture schooling. Um, I went to the uh, U University of Buffalo. Um, I have a four-year architectural degree from, from them. I, I graduated um, a long time ago, um, and uh, and I moved out to the uh, the Albany area shortly thereafter uh, and started my career. And I actually worked uh, mainly on uh, K through 12 educational facilities for a long period of time, um, and that was the, the kind of my trajectory uh, in the architecture field. Um, architecture is something I've always been passionate about ever, ever since a young age, as I said, um, and it's still uh, it's a joy to come to work to every, every single day. Um, you know, I spend a lot of my day uh, these days um, actually managing projects, managing multiple projects. Um, I do a fair, a fair amount of design work, um, although I work with my teams uh, here at the office uh, to do uh, and work with them on design. So I work with a, a wide range of, of talented people uh, in all ages. Um, uh, some of them are younger than me, some of them are older than me. Um, but we, um, we take pride in developing our younger staff into uh, becoming and moving up the ladder in our office uh, into management positions uh, where they're overseeing multiple projects. But everybody gets to, gets to uh, uh, get a handle in uh, designing buildings and spaces uh, and doing interior design. Uh, but we also have, have to manage our, our, our costs um, and we have to manage um, the products on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, my favorite part of, of architecture ever since, uh, since I was little uh, and kind of getting into this field uh, when I first started uh, is actually meeting with clients and, uh, and understanding their expectations for whatever project it might be, whether it's a resident 
residence or whether it's a, a commercial building or whether it's a school or an office space, um, getting in touch with the clients and meeting with them. Um, unfortunately, we don't do a lot of face-to-face -face meetings during the last year. Um, however, uh, we do a lot of Zoom meetings with our clients on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but getting into the, uh, into the nitty-gritty and needling down uh, to the expectations of what their real wants and needs are uh, on, on, a, on a space that they're going to either live in or work in um, or sometimes go to school in uh, is really my favorite part of the job. And it, it's what makes me uh, get out of bed every morning. That's great. So you talked a little bit about some of the skills that you use, whether that be the art, the math, um, people skills, it sounds like with um, working with the clients and interfacing with them. Um, so are there any other skills that we might be missing that maybe someone in um, middle or high school might start to, to finesse as they're looking towards a career in architecture? Well, absolutely, Kate. So one of the one of the things I always like to tell students who are thinking potentially about a, a career in architecture or a related field is um, architecture school is a really, really good liberal arts education. OK, um, what that means is you get immersed in a whole lot of different uh, things uh, along your, your educational path. Um, so uh, as, as students are thinking about what they want to do, um, you know, I like to call architecture kind of technical artistry. Right. So we get to be artists. We also get to be technical. Um, but a lot of the um, a lot of what going to architecture school is, is not only just, you know, drawing buildings and making floor plans and learning how to draw, but it's also um, being immersed in art history uh, and cultural aspects of, of it. We usually do study abroad in different, in different countries um, to understand what other cultures do architecturally. Uh, there's, a, like I said, a lot of history. Um, there is a fair amount of math, um, but it's applied mathematics. In other words, we use a lot of a lot of the things, you know, there's not a lot of trigonometry or calculus, but it's a lot of geometry, a lot of understanding how numbers and dimensions work in the in this in the scheme of things and a lot of area calculations to make sure that the spaces are fitting those things. So math is very important, um, although it's very focused in what types of math that we use. Um, I think that, um, like I mentioned before, some of the most important things that we that we learn uh, before we go to architecture school and that we can focus on are, are some of the artistic pursuits. And whether that be drawing or painting or uh, photography is a, is, a, is a hobby of mine and, and actually got started doing that when I was in high school and, and I carried that in through college. And, um, part of uh, my, my minor in college uh, was, was actually photo in photography. Um, and so that, that's really, really helpful uh, in architecture school because you have to be able to convey your ideas and sometimes take pictures of things to convey your ideas. So um, everything's related, um, but it's a really, really good kind of broad range of, of uh, liberal arts education going to architecture school. That's great. So I know that there's a variety of career pathways that exist in the industry because you touch a lot of different facets. So architects seem to work with a lot of different industries. Can you talk a bit, a little bit about some of the pathways within the architecture field? Absolutely. So um, what I do is really um, what would be considered true architecture. However, um, because of that liberal arts uh, background in architecture, um, there's a lot of different pathways that people can pursue. Um, one of the ways, uh, one of the other pathways is I have, a, I have quite a few friends who uh, went to architecture school and then they went to engineering school and they actually do architectural engineering. So they focus on the more technical aspects of putting buildings together. Um, architecture and engineering really, really go hand in hand. Um, we design a lot of the buildings that we that we put together, but we have to rely on engineers and work very closely with engineers, whether it be for mechanical systems or electrical systems or plumbing systems or structural systems, um, but we work with them on a day to day basis. So there's a lot of crossover between those two fields in architecture and engineering uh, and knowing what engineers do makes better architects. So those two pathways definitely cross a lot. Um, the other thing that is really, really uh, important and, 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 uh, and popular, um, should have been popular for a much longer period of time is um, this, the, the sustainability aspect of architecture. Um, we design buildings and buildings use a lot of energy. Um, they're, they're one of the largest consumptive um, uh, consumers of, of, of our energy and resources uh, in the world. So um, it's incumbent upon us to uh, design buildings that are energy efficient. Uh, they uh, conserve resources. Uh, we don't contribute to global warming. Um, and there's a lot of efforts in the architectural profession to uh, enhance and, and, and uh, essentially roll those things out to a greater, a greater degree and a greater public. And a lot of architects have, have um, made their careers in just dealing with sustainability and green design. Um, we focused on that pretty heavily here in our office, but um, there are complete, 
career paths that are into the, the science, engineering, and uh, architecture aspects of, of sustainability, um, which is also very important. Um, I have some friends who um, went to, um, after they finished their architecture schooling, uh, they went to um, uh, art history school, and they are now either professors at colleges. Um, some of them um, teach uh, art history. Uh, some of them teach architecture, believe it or not. Um, a lot of uh, what we do an architecture school is specifically designed to help other people understand what you do uh, and communication. Communication is absolutely the most important thing that we do on a day-to-day -day basis as architects, whether we're communicating verbally or we're communicating via our drawings. Um, uh, but we learn how to basically be teachers. Um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of my friends actually went uh, stayed in architecture school and went on to get um, either master's degrees or in some cases PhDs uh, in architectural education and now they are professors uh, teaching the next round of, of architects uh, how to do their jobs successfully. So there's a lot of different pathways um, for the architecture profession. That's great. So businesses, much like schools this past year, have changed a lot with the pandemic. Is there <laughs> new ways that you're doing business that might stick into the future? Well, we're doing it right now. Um, Zoom is is uh, you know initially it was a lot of it was a lot of excitement around it. Um, frankly, we probably do a little bit too much of it now uh, out of necessity. Um, but I will say that uh, a lot of my time prior to um, uh, prior to the pandemic was spent behind the windshield, uh, driving to clients, driving to job sites. Um, and while I still do that a fair amount, um, nowhere near as much as I did pre-pandemic, um, having the ability to do these electronic communications and do Zoom meetings with clients actually sometimes works a lot better uh, from a scheduling standpoint and from being able to communicate standpoint. And again, it comes back to communication. The more we communicate, the better the outcome. So, um, so yeah, I think this is something that will stick afterwards. Um, you'll notice right now I'm actually um, in, a, in an office. Um, this is the first time in my career uh, that I have actually had my own office box. Um, normally, we, we like to work in a more collaborative uh, environment where everybody's kind of in the same space, but because of uh, social distancing requirements, I'm actually working in what, what is our conference room right now and have been since, uh, since about June. Um, I'm looking forward to going back out on the floor with the rest of my team, um, but until things loosen up a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's just a different uh, atmosphere. Um, we spend a lot of time um, wearing our masks uh, when we're up from our desks, and that's really important to make sure that everybody's safe and healthy. Um, and we've done a really good job of, of doing that in our profession, but also in our office and keeping everybody uh, everybody healthy. Our best asset uh, in our businesses uh, and as an architect is our, our, our teams, our employees. We have a fantastic group of people that I get to work with every single day. Uh, most importantly is keeping them safe and healthy. Uh, we've been um, we've been able to do that very successfully during the pandemic. But um, there's been a lot of changes, um, but I'm, I'm actually enthusiastic about some of the things that will stick uh, and make our jobs easier and be able to communicate a little bit better. That's great. So what is your favorite project you've worked on? Oh boy, that's a tough one. They're all my babies. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, interesting. I have a lot of clients that I've worked with for, for many, many, many years now. Um, and uh, some of our, uh, our students who are maybe listening to this are familiar with some of the projects that I've worked on uh, recently and locally. Um, currently, um, and it's been one of the longest projects that I've worked on, um, is the Little Red Schoolhouse in North Greenbush. Uh, it's currently under construction, and we've been working to put that together for many, many, many years uh, and develop a project for them uh, so that they can uh, keep their school district active and uh, make sure that the space for the students is healthy and safe and, and adequate in size. So that's a, that's a favorite of mine. Um, I'm very fortunate that I get to work on a lot of different project types. Um, recently, I got to complete um, a couple of uh, brewery projects where they where they brew beer uh, uh, commercially and the, the Common Roots Brewing Company up in Glens Falls. Um, that was an, a project that uh, that we just recently completed and is open for business right now. And that was a lot of fun. The clients in that case were some of the best people I've ever gotten a chance to work with. Um, and then on the educational side of things, um, the Gardner Dickinson Elementary School, we did the addition there a couple of years ago. Um, some of my some of the students listening to this might be familiar with that. They may actually even be in those spaces right now. So uh, it's great to uh, to see that being used. Uh, my daughter goes to school there, and it's nice to be able to see the spaces that I've designed being used by people that are that are close to me. Um, 
there's a there's a litany of other projects. I've been doing this long enough that that uh, it's it, they're all exciting. They're all they're all challenging. They're all a little bit different. Sometimes they're similar. A lot of K-12 uh, school projects are very very similar, but everyone has a different challenge and a different aspect that we need to uh, work with our clients on. And again, it comes back to communication and making sure that we really needle down into making sure that we're getting the the um, solving the problems for our clients that exist in their spaces. And it makes every day a little different. That's great. So um, as we wrap up, just one last question. How do you define success? You talked a little bit about this earlier. So how would you tell students that you define success and maybe just a tidbit of advice for them as, as they move forward? Sure. I will say that um, one of the most um, exhausting and um, and frankly rewarding things I've ever had to do in my life was was going to architecture school. Um, and you know that it, it, while you're, we're putting in the hours and many, many, many long hours in studio, working on projects during school, um, you always know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and that light, uh, when, I, when I first started as a, in, in the career as an architect and actually working in the field, um, that light keeps getting brighter and brighter. Uh, and I think that when you focus on something and you work hard at it, um, and and it, it comes to fruition and, and frankly, you get paid to do it, um, that's really uh, success. I think being able to get up every morning and feel confident that what you're doing is making a difference uh, and, and really is um, making people's lives better uh, in some small way, sometimes in some big ways, um, that's what I consider success. Um, I think, um, yeah, it's nice to be uh, it's nice to be paid to do what you love. Um, and and if and I would say to people that if you're not doing something that you that you don't love, um, find something that you do because you have a long career ahead of you. Um, and it's 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 really un I, unfortunately I, I I you know not in our in our office, but I work with people that don't enjoy what they do, uh, and that's not a that's not a long term uh, tenable situation. Uh, I say find what you love to do, uh, do it well work hard at it. Uh, this is a very hard profession. There's ups and downs as with anything. Um, but if you love it and you stick with it, um, then you'll be successful. Great. Well, thank you, Ed. And thank you for uh, tuning in to the students that are out there. And once again, thank you to our sponsors, Capcom and WB Games for sponsoring the Chambers Connect with Careers Week. And we'll see you soon.